bringing the people behind our food to life. I like to define fermentation pretty broadly as the transformative action of microorganisms. But of course not every transformative action of microorganisms results in something delicious that we wish to put into our mouths. Uh, and generally we reserve this word fermentation to describe um, desirable or intentional uh, microbial transformations. Um, you know, biologists definitely work with a more specific restrictive definition of fer fermentation, uh, which is that it's the production of energy without oxygen, anaerobic metabolism. And most of the fermented foods and beverages, you know, meet the scientists' criteria. Um, but the reason I prefer to work with a broader lay definition is that there are a handful of what I call the oxymoronic ferments um, that actually require oxygen. Um, you know, some examples of that would be vinegar, kombucha, tempeh, certain kinds of cheeses. Um, so I just prefer to work with this broader lay definition that, you know, uh, you know, incorporates the scientific definition, but also the anomalies and sort of unites them under the idea of um, microbial transformation. My gateway into fermentation was definitely sauerkraut. Um, and I really recommend that to people who are interested in fermentation and, you know, just want to know where to start just because, you know, it's incredibly easy, it's intrinsically safe, you don't need any special starter cultures or any special equipment, you can get results relatively quickly, it's very delicious, it's, you know, supportive of good health. So, you know, there's lots of things to recommend it as a, as a beginning project. Um, you know, from there, I think I got into yogurt, some country wine making, playing around a little bit with cheese making. Uh, you know, then I, um, uh, I tasted somebody's homemade miso and uh, wanted to figure out how to make miso. So, you know, I got the book of miso and learned how to make miso. I learned how to make tempeh. Um, you know, and then, you know, by, by that time I was you know, thoroughly obsessed with all things fermented and, um, uh, you know, really began seeking out, you know, information um, to try to learn how to make other kinds of things. But I, I mean, I would say that I have experimented at least a little bit in, you know, pretty much every realm of fermentation. You know, really my first experience, you know, teaching people how to, how to make sauerkraut was, you know, my first encounter with the pervasive fear of bacteria that people project onto, you know, such a simple and safe process. Um, so I got very interested in the idea of, you know, like demystifying it for people and, um, uh, you know, helping people who were afraid overcome that fear. Um, and you know, learn the, the, the simple techniques for uh, for 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 doing it. Um, and you know, it was really you know teaching that led me into writing. And the first time I started writing about fermentation. I just realized I wanted to have a broader context. So I started reading, I mean, I read a biography of Louis Pasteur and, you know, it, that also sort of addressed, you know, the whole emergence of the field of microbiology. Um, you know, I have a liberal arts education. I majored in history. Um, you know, I'm just very interested in, you know, how things come to be. And then while I was working on my latest book, The Art of Fermentation, um, you know, I really immersed myself in, in microbiology. And um, I mean, I really never, I mean, I haven't taken a biology class since ninth grade, but I mean, I just find all the microbiology stuff so fascinating and, um, you know, bac bacteria, um, you know, b bacteria are these, um, these shapeshifters and, you, you know, I mean, the emerging consensus in evolutionary biology is definitely that all life is evolved from bacteria. But, you know, once you start learning about some of the details of bacteria, I mean, basically microbiologists are rejecting the notion of species for bacteria. Like species is something that is fixed genetically. You know, we're, you know, we are genetically fixed. You know, the plant is genetically fixed. Uh, a fungus is genetically fixed, but bacteria have this like incredible genetic flexibility 
flexibility and basically you know any bacteria given or you know any bacterium you know given the availability of the right genetic material and the sort of you know the the the, the reason to change you know a different environment a different nutrient um, uh, uh, to uh, to metabolize you know can really become any other kind of bacteria and and microbiologists are likening like you know the role of genes in the life of a bacteria to the way human beings use tools like you know you don't have to carry a knife or an axe or a jackhammer with you all the time you pick up those tools when you have some you know specific reason why you need to use them and then you don't have to be encumbered by them all the time you you put them down when they're no longer relevant and so you know basically bacteria can do the same thing with 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 with, with genetics and so I, I don't know I've just become fascinated by by, by that and that's really all through um, you know book learning um, you know and, and also talking to people you know visiting microbiology labs I would hope that we are in the midst of a real paradigm shift um, you know for you know all of us who grew up in you know the United States um, you know during the second half of the 20th century it was just all about um, you know killing bacteria um, you know fearing bacteria avoiding bacteria uh, you know scientists in the academy are you know developing a um, you know sort of greater appreciation for the importance of bacteria in our you know physiology and 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 functioning and you know if we were to sort of succeed with that sort of you know 20th century agenda of eradicating bacteria you know they would be committing suicide um, so I, so I think that there's there's a growing appreciation of the importance of bacteria um, and uh, you know, hopefully we'll, we'll, you know, sort of be seeing, you know, young, young people, um, you know, without the indoctrination that bacteria are so, um, uh, you know, terrifying. Uh, you know, I think of fermented foods as being pre-digested. So the micro the, the fermenting organisms are actually, you know, digesting the nutrients of the food, you know, into some other form. Um, and, uh, you know, the biopreservatives, the acids or the alcohol that enable food to be stable for long periods of time, um, you know, those are products of the, you know, pre-digestion of carbohydrates. Um, you know, into other forms. Um, um, you know, proteins generally get broken down into amino acids, which are the building blocks of, 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 of protein. So, you know, the, the how is basically, you know, it's like little microorganisms, you know, eating it before us, um, you know, and then and breaking it down, um, you know, before we do, which, you know, makes certain nutrients much more bioavailable to us, you know, generates these other fermentation byproducts like the acids and the alcohol. Um, uh, breaks down certain compounds that can be toxic in foods and makes them uh, safe to eat. Um, so, so you know, there's a lot of transformation, and you know, it's it's a little bit hard to generalize because you know there's so many different kinds of ferments, kinds of organisms at work. Um, but that's the basic idea: is that these organisms are are pre-digesting the food and you know turning it into something a little bit different. Our bodies are host to elaborate communities of microorganisms that number in the trillions. Um, you know, the current thinking is that the, the number of cells that we each possess that we would think of as our body with our own unique individual DNA code are outnumbered uh, by at least 10 to 1 by bacteria uh, that, 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 that we're host to. And, um, you know, I. I, I I think that really we don't know enough to sort of, you know, say that certain bacteria that are part of the indigenous population of our bodies are good and other ones are are, are, are bad. Um, but, you know, but they're the communities that we're, you know, that, 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 that are indigenous to to us and, and, and that are part of us. And there's been a lot of really interesting mapping of these communities. I mean, really, the, the technology's only existed for about 10 years to be able to sort of, you know, really, um, uh, you know, decipher what these, what these um, uh, communities are. And different parts of the body have, have different communities associated with them. And, you know, let's say like in your mouth, you know, there's something like a thousand distinct uh, bacterial strains, you know, in the mouth of a, you know, average healthy person. Um, um, and uh, you know they uh, 
but they've looked at different regions. So imagine like, okay, like, you know, this, this area on your arm is something of a desert, uh, you know, and then your armpit is something of a jungle. And these, you know, sort of distinct ecological niches give rise to different uh, uh, microbial populations. Um, you know, the ones that, that are the most studied certainly are the bacteria of the intestines because they play such a, a critical role not only in digestion and nutrient assimilation, but also in regulating our immune function. Um, and the mechanics of how our gut bacteria um, you know, inform and regulate our, um, our uh, uh, immune function is really only very crudely understood. And, and I, you know, I think we, we're just kind of, you know, scratching the, 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 the surface of it. Um, and in terms of, you know, the, the, the interaction between the bacteria on our food and the bacteria um, you know, in our intestines, you know, that's another, you know, sort of area that is only very crudely understood. Um, you know, it seems clear that, you know, unless you're extremely unhealthy, um, you know, every ecological niche of your intestine is, is occupied. You know, some, like some organism is, is, is living there. So, you know, when you eat some sauerkraut or some yogurt, it's not like it's entering this blank slate and it can just sort of, you know, take over, um, you know, the, the, the um, you know, walls of your intestines. I mean, they're entering this elaborate community and there's some sort of an interaction. And, um, you know, the, 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 the general model that seems, um, you know, the, the likely scenario is that the bacteria that you ingest are actually um, enriching the um, uh, genetic environment for the bacteria in your intestines. So, so basically giving them more tools to work with. So even if the individual bacteria in the food don't have an opportunity to sort of, you know, colonize your gut, um, you know, they, they, they actually are sort of enriching the bacteria that are there by giving them a broader range of genetics to, 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 to work with, to incorporate. I would say that my, you know, outlook on the world is, you know, informed by, um, you know, political understandings of things. And, um, you know, my whole, you know, sort of interest in moving, you know, to a rural environment and getting involved in keeping a garden, you know, had to do with a desire to be um, you know, closer to the source of the food that I was eating. And it wasn't, it wasn't entirely politicized. I mean, it was also based on sort of, you know, health and a desire, um, uh, you know, to sort of, you know, be healthy and eat really good food and drink good spring water and things like that. Um, and, but, but I do see that as, as really the broader um, uh, context for the work that I've been doing. You know, I, I mean, I see all around me, you know, people who are, um, you know, craving uh, a stronger connection to the food that they eat, and and you know, um, uh, you know, connection to our food, you know, also embodies you know connection to the land, connection to other kinds of organisms, um, um, you know, being more connected to you know other forms of life that that that, that nourish us, and um, you know, so I see you know fermentation is really like a critical piece of that puzzle. You know, how people can you know reclaim their food, you know, reclaim, um, you know, power and, and connection, and there's sort of economic repercussions of that, there's political repercussions of that, um, you know, social and cultural repercussions of that. So, I mean, I think that, you know, food is very central in our, you know, daily lives, and so, you know, how food gets to our table has, you know, just a, like enormous, um, you know, and, 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 and deep, you um, um, uh, uh, repercussions. Um, and so, you know, I think it, food is more than just food, um, you know, because it, you know, sort of embodies all the, all these other things. Um, uh, you know, I mean, I, I don't really assume that, you know, fermentation, um, you know, leads everybody to the same political outlook. 
you know, as, as, as I have. I mean, you know, certainly some of the largest multinational corporations in the world are, you know, sort of fermentation um, uh, businesses, you know, Kraft, Anheuser-Busch, you know, I mean, I mean so certainly, you know, f fermentation can be sort of, you know, centralized and, 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 and mass-produced like any other a aspect of, of, of food production. Um, but I think that, you know, after decades of people uh, largely cheering on that process and, and happy to have centralized food that they don't have to, um, you know, trouble themselves with, with producing, I, I, I mean, I think that there's been a large sort of backlash against that and people sort of recognizing that a lot, a lot has been lost with that and wanting to sort of take their food back. Um, and so I, I see the sort of like a revival of interest in home fermentation as, you know, really a, a manifestation of, of, of that.